quasi here. One of the most bewildering discoveries that has perplexed even the most intelligent of physicists, like Albert Einstein, is the theory of quantum entanglement. To properly explain entanglement to you, I'd like to tell you a story. Once upon a time, in the vast expanse of the quantum universe, there were two particles, Leo and Mia. Leo and Mia shared a special bond that connected them deeply no matter how far apart they were in the universe. Now, these two were like two dancers with an unspoken understanding. When they were created, they were given a set of quantum rules that they both instinctively followed. According to these rules, if Leo spun left, Mia would spin right and vice versa. But here's the catch. Until they were observed, neither Leo nor Mia had a definite direction of spin. They were in a state of spinning both left and right simultaneously, a state of quantum superposition. Now, one day, a curious astronomer named Albi on a distant planet decided to observe Leo through his powerful quantum telescope. The moment he did this, Leo's spin became definite. Let's say he was spinning left. Instantaneously and light years away, Mia, who was unobserved until then, started spinning right. It was as though they had an invisible, instantaneous connection, transcending the vast distances of space. Now, this bewildered the poor Albi, who knew that nothing could travel faster than the speed of light in this universe. How could Mia, so far away, know instantly which way to spin when Leo was observed. It was as though they were communicating faster than light, but in reality, they were just exhibiting their entangled quantum state. So entanglement basically suggests that when we discover the property of one object, it instantaneously gives us information about the other object. When Einstein was confronted with this fact that violated his theory of relativity that no information could travel faster than light, but we somehow instantaneously know what the property of the other particle was, he declared this activity spooky action at a distance. Have you ever thought perhaps something that you are deeply worried about or fearful of and your worst fear just comes to life? What if there's an entanglement between our thought and the very physical reality that we experience? In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how our mind has a very direct influence on the reality that we experience and how you can use your mind properly to experience the reality that you want. So. Let's get started. So one of the hallmark qualities of quantum physics and the experiment that I just talked to you about earlier with the two different particles and their spin is before they're observed, they're actually in a quantum superposition, a superposition of different states. That's a fancy word for saying they're in an unknown state or they're in both or multiple states at the same time time. There have been multiple experiments that have actually confirmed this. And the very first experiment that I'm sure you're familiar with, the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment showed that when you pass light through two different slits, just singular slits, what you'd see on the other side isn't what you'd expect to see. Instead of two single lines, you see different dots on the other side. Why does that happen? Because light behaves as a wave and it interferes with each of the waves of the two different light waves that are going through the slit. Now, what's interesting though, is in 1980s, a guy called Marlon Scully did the same experiment, but he was curious about the effect of observation of light. So they had a theory that maybe light isn't just a wave, but it's also a particle. What if we observe this particle? And instead of sending light, they started to send particles of electrons through each slit. So in the first instance, when they sent these individual electrons, it behaved just like light in a wave pattern and showing the same dotted interference pattern, confirming that yes, these electrons are behaving as a wave. These photons are behaving as waves. But what's interesting though, is when they actually put detectors around the slits to notice which slit the particle actually goes through, because before that it's unknown, they didn't know which slit it was entering through. When they started to track which particular slit the electron was going through, guess what came out on the other side? Particles, not an interference pattern, actual particles, two different lines of particles. And that flabbergasted scientists, and to this day, we are still flabbergasted because we can't explain why the effect of observation changes the results that we experience. So one commonality that you're going to experience here, that you're gonna notice here is 
our observation, our consciousness is determining the result that we see. Up until the point we observe the quantum superposition of states, it remains a probabilistic wave. There is nothing materializing, but at the moment you observe and give it your attention, it materializes into a particle or material. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Can you see how we can use our mind to observe the quantum events that we have concocted to materialize into reality? If you can't, I'm going to share with you the equation that is going to make sense to this. But the key thing I want you to take away is it is the quality of our attention and observation that influences the outcomes that we see in our lives. And you might be thinking, oh, that's perception, that's subjective. In this case, we're seeing that it's not really subjective. It is actually objective. Your subjectivity affects the objective reality that you experience. So now what we can say here is we have an equation that relates the quantum event that manifests to what energy we put in on the other side. So I'm going to explain this and I'm going to try not to fall off the deep end. But if we have Q, one of the dependent variables, it is dependent on a constant A, which is our attention, multiplied by energy. Q is the quantum event that would manifest. A is the attention constant that is determined by our quality of attention. And it's going to take on three values and E is the energy required to manifest this event. To understand this a little bit better, let's dive into attention and what attention subjectively consists of. If you think about the quality of your attention, there's three main types of attention we all possess. There is positive attention. We observe something and we feel positively towards it. Our relationship towards it is a positive relationship. For example, feelings like joy, gratitude, love, what you want in your life, what you're grateful for that you have when you feel good about something, that is positive attention. Then we have neutral attention. We just observe something and it just is. We don't do anything about it. We pretty much just ignore it, it just is. And finally, there is negative attention. Negative attention is when we focus on what we don't like, what we, we would like to get away from, uh, what we hate, what we would not like to experience, what we don't have in our lives. So when you think about money, instead of thinking about money, you think about all the money you don't have, which drives you to think about money. Fundamentally, it's stemming from a place of lack and focus on what you don't actually have. We can say that our attention takes on three qualities. This is the variable A. So the variable A right here can exist in plus one, minus one and zero. When A becomes plus one, this quantum event equation yields a positive result. When you multiply it by the energy required to manifest a quantum event, you can say that if you wanted to manifest a certain amount of money into your life, let's say you are at 5k a month, you want to manifest $20,000 a month and travel wherever you want, you want to get to six figures, well, that would require a certain amount of energy. And we're going to talk about this later when we talk about our intention energy. But for now, understand that it will take a amount of positive observation and a particular amount of energy to manifest that quantum event. If we want to manifest a negative outcome where we lose all of our money, well, it would require us being fearful about something in our lives or focus on what we don't have, negative attention and a certain amount of energy attributed to that negative attention. When we multiply the both, we get that negative quantum event manifesting into our reality. However, if we just don't observe it at all, we just ignore it completely, give it the attention of zero. When Q is zero, it still exists in that superposition of states. So from this, we can deduce that unless and until Q is zero, we actually see a defined quantum event manifest into physical reality. I know this is getting a little bit complex, but if you understand this and you know how to use this, you're going to be able to create the life that you want. It's all a matter of the kind of attention that you attribute to it and the energy that's required, which we're going to talk about in determining our intention energy. Let me know in the comments what your takeaway from this is up until this point and if you understand this equation. So now let's get to this next part which inevitably raises the question how long does it take to manifest this quantum event? So if I want to create the life of my dreams, I want to manifest the partner that I want or the body that I want or the money that I want, the wealth that I want, get away from your nine to five and the job that's that you hate, you have to make a certain amount of money, you've determined that what your goal is, you have determined that it will take positive attention. But the question is how long? What's that delay factor? Now we get to a variable 
goal called C delta T. So it's the time that it takes for us to manifest the goal, the quantum event, is a multiple of C times delta T, where C is the complexity variable, meaning if from my current life circumstance, how far is that next life circumstance? Can I perceive it happening? So to give you an example, when I started and I started to make these YouTube videos, my initial goal was simply to make YouTube videos. When I was in my nine to five and I didn't have any money and I didn't have the 20K a month I wanted to make, my goal was 20K a month, but I can't conceive of myself making 20K a month yet. It's too complex for my current life path of working a nine to five and making 5K a month. Because it's too complex, I'm looking at the next goal, which is less complex. It takes less energy. My next goal is, hey, I have an idea to start up a YouTube channel. Let's focus on that. Somehow that'll lead me to that 20K a month. Something will happen. I'm just open to the idea of it, but I'm acting on what I know now. But there's also a delay factor. The time it would take, the time I would need to focus on the goal for it to manifest. So that's what delta T is and that's what C is. From this, we can get the final equation that in order to manifest any quantum event, we need A, E multiplied by C delta T, where A is the quality of your attention, E is the energy required, C is the complexity variable, meaning how complex the goal is for my current lifeline. So to explain that again in more concrete terms, if in my current lifeline, I am making 5K a month and I wanna be a millionaire, that's gonna be a big stretch. What's that middle ground in between? The C variable will be higher the total energy required will be higher and the time required will also be higher. So these are all multiplying with each other to make a very large number as opposed to focusing on that next goal. Do you see how this is working? Depending on the complexity of your goals. And again, this is subjective, right? If you can perceive yourself going from zero to a hundred very, very quickly, then this subjective energy will drop. The complexity constant is determined by where you are in your life. So this is also affected by your observation and attention. That's the beauty of this. This is both subjective and objective. Okay, so if you understand this, or if you don't understand this, just let me know in the comments so I can get your feedback to refine this even further and help you understand this better. Because once you understand the dependence, the relationship between time, complexity, and the energy that's required and the attention that you put in, you're going to become a master at creating your reality. The things we can control here, let's Talk about those, what can we control here? So this equation allows us to determine what value of joule seconds is required for us to manifest certain goals. What we can control here, the independent variables are our attention, what kind of attention we place on something, how much energy we put into it. This we can also control, this is an input. The complexity con constant or variable is determined by the complexity of our goals. So C is proportional to the, to the goal G and delta T is also proportional to G. We can also focus on how much time we can focus on that goal. So anything on the right hand side is an independent variable, meaning we have full control over what inputs we put in to get this outcome, the manifestation of the ultimate quantum event. Now to fully understand this, we have already covered attention. We can choose what attention we put into it. So for example, I used to find that a lot of the times I would complain a lot and focus on what I don't have and use that to think about what I wanted. Listen to your internal dialogue from time to time. Like I would focus on, oh, you know, I made 20K a month. I could have made 25K this month if I closed two extra clients. Or, you know, I made $200,000 this month. I could have made, you know, X, Y, Z more if I just closed extra. But now over time, I've trained myself to get rid of that dialogue because I realize that that dialogue is destructive and it is putting me into negative energy and it's creating circumstances that I don't want to experience and that I want to get away from. So for most people, when they think of a goal, they always begin with what they don't want, but the problem is they can't shift their attention from what they don't want to what they do want. So they get into this cycle of victim mentality. Oh, you know, maybe I'm just broken. Society's out to get me. Nothing works out for me. Instead of having an empowered mindset of I can do it, I can do anything that I want. I just need to keep focusing on it for long enough, that delta T. And we also talked about C, the complexity of it, where that goal is in relationship to where you are right now. And finally, we also talked about delta T, that time that it takes for us 
to get there, how long we actually need to focus on it until we have reached enough joule seconds for it to manifest into reality. For most people, they're just not persistent enough. They think of a goal and they just forget about it. Do you know how long I focused on getting to, you know, 20K a month? I had to focus on that goal and visualize that goal for almost two years until it actually happened. It took me four years to go from 20K a month to 200K a month. Okay, so it's all dependent on your current worldview and where you're at. What took me four years might take you four months. That's again completely dependent on reality. One thing we just haven't covered yet, which I think is one of the most important parts of this, is the energy part. How do we control how much energy we have? Because if we supply enough intention energy, guess what? Apart from the attention, everything else becomes irrelevant because if we supply negative intention, then the negative outcome will manifest. So I want you to think about this for a second. When you are thinking of a negative outcomes and something that you're really, really fearful of, how strongly do you feel in your fear? I bet your fear is stronger than how much you're grateful for. And there's a good reason behind that. That is our survival conditioning. We've been hardwired, biologically wired to avoid death and to survive. That is just a prerogative. We will do anything, fight like hell, to avoid losing what we have rather than take the risk to gain something. There have been tons of tests done where people were asked to risk $100 and lose $100 and it's countless times people would rather not lose $100 than gain $200, even $300. We don't want to lose more than we want to gain. But we need to rewire this, at least the balance of this, so we can focus more and more on what we actually would like to see. And this is where intention energy comes in. So the next part, we're going to discuss how to raise the intensity of your intention energy. Going back to my original point, when we spoke of intention energy and you focusing on negative outcomes, the more you focus on negative outcomes and the intensity of your focus on this negative outcome is what makes this negative outcome come to life quicker. So the reason why we keep ourselves stuck in the same situation over and over again is because we so strongly feel about how negative our lives are right now and we complain and feel victim to our circumstances so much. So if some particular situation has kept happening to you, you've gotten addicted to feeling negative. You know, this is your natural state of being. This is your shell. This is what keeps you comfortable. This is what keeps you alive. Again, we go back to that survival conditioning. And because of this ingrained habit of being negative, it prevents you from taking the risks that you know you need to take to experience a life that you want. It prevents you from taking responsibility and saying, hold on, I can actually change this. I actually have the power to change this pattern. Even though I'm not seeing it now, let's focus on what I do want in that next moment. But instead of doing that, we look at, uh, look, see, I told you I'm a fucking loser. I see, I told you you're gonna suck. I told you you're no good. Why are you even trying? It's that voice in our head that's gotten so comfortable. That's become such a deep ingrained habit. So you need to catch yourself every time that happens. Otherwise, you suffer the fate of negative attention. So now that we've gotten our attention under control, we need to power it with intention. That's where the energy comes from. So let's talk about intention and how to access the most powerful intention of all, outer intention. So the formal definition of intention that we're going to work with for our purposes that's gonna serve it to raise our energy is going to be, intention is the resolve, the resoluteness in our decision to have and to act. Simple. There's basically three main types of intention, by the way. Just like three types of attention, there's three types of intention. The lowest level of intention is desire. It's when we want something, we long for something. Desire is what creates the potential for intention. Without desire, there is no life, there is no intention. For a long time, I misunderstood what Napoleon Hill talked about. He talked about the importance of having a burning desire. I thought, hey, having a burning desire is bad, so don't have desire. That's actually incorrect. That's what I realized two years ago, that to have desire is actually good, but it needs to be transmuted into intention, which brings us to the first type of intention, which is the inner intention. Inner intention is my resolve to do whatever it takes. You'll see tons of gurus online who'll say, do whatever it takes, do the boring work, do the hard work, launch your attack on the world. It is the easiest way to achieve your goal and the most predictable way to achieve your goals. There is no doubt about that, but you're going to be grinding your gears. Eventually it will happen, but you will burn yourself down to the ground making it happen. So to complement that, 
you actually need something a little more powerful, which is what's known as outer intention. Have you ever had it in your life where you just couldn't explain phenomenon that happened? Things just fell together into place all by itself. People you needed to find, synchronicities that needed to happen, doors that needed to open up, all of a sudden opened up. Why? It's because you're in alignment, okay? You were in complete alignment. It was your resolve to have. Inner intention is your resolve to do. It's still very indirect, right? Just think about intention in this manner. Inner intention is my resolve to do something. I'm not thinking about having, I'm just focused on doing. I'm doing for the sake of doing sometimes. That's what people do sometimes. They just do for the sake of doing doesn't produce results. When I'm focused on outer intention, I'm focused on having. One way or another, I will have it. I don't care how, it simply happens. That is outer intention. This leads me to the four levels of intention. And you're going to notice this in your life. So the four levels of intention are want, I want it to happen really bad. That keeps us stuck in desire. That's where we begin. When you go a level above that, you go to level two, which is will. It will happen, it's not happening, but it will happen sometime, it will. Want is at the level of desire, and desire is lower in the scale of consciousness. A little bit above desire is hope. I hope that it will happen. It will happen. The third level is the level of intention, which is it's happening. And the final level is when it does happen. It already has happened. And this is what Neville Goddard talks about, right? He talks about living in the end state. What does it look like when it has happened? And that's what you wanna do. So the two keys I'm going to leave you off with to really tap into the highest form of energy is number one, to tap into outer intention. This doesn't mean you abandon inner intention. It doesn't mean you abandon doing. It just means you can ease up on it or you can do from a different place. You can do from a place of being. Outer intention is a state of being. When I'm one with my goal, the doing is natural. When I become the successful YouTuber that makes really great videos, the actions of me making a video is natural. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to be technical and place your arm here, talk in this intonation, point to the board at this moment. I don't have to do any of that. I simply trust and assume that I already am a great video maker and a very effective communicator, and it simply comes out of me. If you go back to my old videos, my oldest video, you're going to see a different kind of energy when I didn't assume that, and there was a different frame, a different kind of authority, but then that changed over time because I stepped into the identity. So the fundamental key you wanna take away from this is focusing on being, focusing on having. Focus on how the goal manifests itself by its own accord. Your resolve to have. Somehow the goal happens by itself. It simply happens. I want my video to go viral, don't know how, simply happens. If it doesn't happen this time, great. It wasn't meant to happen. Might happen another time, might not. In my mind, it's already reality and I'm not doubting the reflection. I'm not looking at the reflection in the mirror. I'm only concerned with the image that I'm presenting in the mirror. So number one, focus on how the goal gets manifested by itself. Anything that you want that you've been struggling with for, for a very long time, just in your mind's eye, just focus on how the goal gets accomplished by itself without your interference. And if you can't, conceive of it happening just by itself. Focus on how it gets accomplished by itself with your interference. Maybe you do something and all of a sudden, voila, it manifests. That's completely fine too. Just focus on how the goal gets manifested. Number two, you ideally want to be in that state of it has already happened. It's done. But for most people, it's tough to convince your mind to believe that. So at least start at level three. It's happening. Be patient. Be open. It's happening. The money that I want to make, it's happening. It's working. The goals that I've visualized, it's happening. It's working. I recently just got a message from one of our clients. He joined us at around 60 to 80K a month. I believe it's his physiotherapy uh, chiropractic business. He just messaged me earlier. I'm gonna put it up here. And he's like, quasi, it's happening. This month, January, we're on track to do $200,000 this month. And by the end of the year, I'm projecting this year is gonna be a record year. We're gonna do, I don't know if he said three million or four million, and by next year, we're projecting to do 10 million. I asked him how. I'm aligned to that goal. Things and doors started to open up. He joined us back in August of 2023. I got on a call with him and we set the goal together and now it's happening. This is the Delta T, right? He wanted to get to 200K months. He wanted to scale up his business, but he was stuck at that same level because of the same plateaus and the same focuses. Now in his meditations, it's deeper and deeper. His connection, his will, his outer intention is there. So he is in that state of it's happening. That is the best state you can be in. Now, you might not be able to convince yourself that the goal you want is happening. That's completely fine. That's okay. Maybe 
you begin one rung above, but really try to get yourself to at least level three. Level three will lead the jump to level four. If you see feedback in your reality where it's like, bad thing after bad thing keeps happening, how do you know this isn't part of it happening? I was talking to one of our sales guys who was having a really tough time this month. He had a record day yesterday after a really um, tough month. I asked him what changed, he's like, just have confidence in myself now. I can see that it's happening. I can see the mirror of reality is starting to reflect and all of those things that happened led me to coming to this point, to learning the lessons that I needed to learn to get to this point. That's exactly what happens. The misfortune and all of the bad things that are seemingly happening, you can't explain it at the moment and you think God is cruel, but what if God is not cruel? What if God knows better for you than you know for you? And that's why God is throwing you all of these tests so that you can pass them, learn the lesson and evolve up to a greater height. Our minds are very linear and we think that the progress journey should be linear. I'm just gonna keep going up and up and up. No, that's re in the reality, that's not what happens. When you correctly focus your attention, your intention, you know the complexity of your goal and you keep focusing on it for the time period that's required for it to manifest, you stay persistent with it. Anything you want will happen. What I want you to do right now is click right here to watch this visualization video that I made, which complements everything that we talked about. This is the ultimate method for visualization. I literally even have a guide that summarizes everything for you, completely free to access, literally on YouTube. This is my life's work. It took me eight years to figure out. We literally teach this to our paid clients. So click right here to access that, 35 minutes long, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in this next video. Visualization is the thing that makes outer intention happen because when you visualize properly, you can conceive of how the goal happens of its own accord. So go watch that right now. That's my greatest wish for you in 2024 is to achieve your deepest goals. And when you get to the next level and you wanna take it even further, well then I'll be on the other side waiting to work closer with you to make it happen. So go click on that and I'll see you in this next video right now.